Last night's address by the Prime Minister signalled an important shift in a number of areas for workers, commuters, travellers and also businesses. Sean is with us today trying to break down exactly what that means for business. Sean, it's, it's a pretty big job for you this morning. How are you? Yeah, m morning. Is, is that all there is? Cheers, guys. Uh, morning to you both. Morning, everybody. Uh, I th think probably the key thing that a lot of workers who were watching the Prime Minister speak last night would have taken away is those workers in England who can't work from home having that new phrase of being actively encouraged to go into work. And there was emphasis on the construction and the manufacturing industries as well. Also talk again about this guidance from the government about how businesses can be COVID secure, as they were putting it. And then business groups this morning are calling for clarity on what that really means for a whole array of sectors. Uh, one business uh, that has stayed open throughout the last few weeks has been Halfords, classed as an essential business because of its car and bike maintenance that it has been providing to people. But it's been much more click and collect at the front door than being able to wander in and do whatever you like, like we used to. And uh, I'm joined now by the boss, Chief Executive Graham Stapleton. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm sure like many, you've, you've, you were watching what the Prime Minister had to say last night. Did anything he said change how you are going to now be doing business in the next few weeks and your thoughts for the months ahead? Uh, I certainly think that um, what the Prime Minister and the Transport Secretary said um, on, on Saturday um, has a big bearing for Halfords, uh, in as much as there will be significantly less public transport available, about 10% of, of normal capacity. And that is going to mean uh, people have to get on bikes and into cars to get to work safely. Um, and that obviously means the role that we've already been playing to keep the UK moving uh, over the lockdown period becomes uh, arguably even more important as we get people back to, to work safely. Sure, um, and, so and that's for people who, will be, who, who are looking to use that equipment. But for you, with your business, with your staff members, if you've got staff members who would get public transport to work every day, for example, if they feel, after hearing the Prime Minister say he'd rather workers avoided public transport where they can, if a member of your staff felt uncomfortable about getting public transport, what would you say to them? Well, I mean, we would do all we can to help them get to work uh, in, in whatever way we can. Uh, we, we've already been trading in 325 retail stores um, and in 345 garages, uh, together with our mobile van services business during lockdown. So colleagues have been able to find a way to work uh, for the, a significant proportion of our operational business so far. Um, so we, we would do all, all we could to, to ensure they got to work. What, what do you need to hear from, whether it's the government or just hear from customers, for you to open your stores fully, for people to be able to wander around the way they can in supermarkets at the moment, socially distancing, but actually browsing your stores? I mean, we, we, um, we would have to be absolutely confident that we could keep a store open and keep social distancing um, at the level that you need to to keep colleagues and customers safe. Um, at the moment, uh, we're not in a position to be confident to do that, and that's why we've kept our stores closed. But we'll be working with colleagues um, and with the government guidelines to see how we can make that happen as soon as we're able to. What, why aren't you confident? Because people will see other essential stores open and, and having rules in place. What is it that's stopping you right now? Um, I think keeping the, the two metres um, in, in any type of store environment when there are a lot of customers in the store and you've got colleagues working uh, next to each other is always a challenge. And I think um, we're, we're learning how the supermarkets are working that through and other retailers and we're working with the government guidance as well to see how we develop that going forward. But until we're absolutely confident and equally our colleagues are, are comfortable too, uh, we, we won't reopen. And we've already heard from you know, your company updating us that you know, profits are, do, are expected to be a bit better than they were before be, because of that initial upsurge in people looking to sort their bikes and, their, and maybe their cars, but perhaps more their bikes in the first few weeks. Is it sustainable for Halfords to carry on the way you are right now and not have to cut costs elsewhere? I think... Um yeah, we've helped uh, a lot of the UK public. I mean, tw 21,000 uh, NHS and essential service workers since lockdown. Um, so we're really pleased that we've been able to support the UK uh, so far. We think we will need to support people even more 
uh, with that reduction in public transport. So um, we're, we're confident through our garage business, be that getting cars back on the road that have been uh, dormant for, for weeks and months, or be it cycling, where we've launched today uh, a big campaign to try and get the 7 million bikes that we think that are languishing in, bike, in, in sheds and garages across the UK back on the road. We're going to give a free check, a 32-point check, to all those bikes and, and, and bike customers to try and help them get back on the road um, and, and get cycling to work. Um, it's really important we do our, our bit uh, to get the UK moving and get them back to work safely. Graham Stapleton, thank you. The Chief Executive of Halfords there, just re reflecting how even for those businesses that can be open right now, how it, it's difficult for bosses to necessarily have the confidence that they can make those stores as safe as they need to be for customers and for, for staff as well. And, and that's what we're going to be watching closely from the government over the next few days is to see exactly what kind of procedures they're going to put in place for businesses to feel a bit more confident to do that. And that's what, yeah, sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, Sean, that's uh, quite a few of the questions we've got coming in for Dominic Raba around that, sort of if I'm asked to go back to work but there aren't sort of social distancing measures in place, then what do I do? So we'll try and get some clarity from the government on that a bit later on today. Yeah, and do send, keep sending in questions. Um, we are trying to read all of them. On the way, for those arriving into the UK, we heard that last night, passengers landing here from anywhere other than the Republic of Ireland and France will soon face a period of quarantine. Sean is looking at what this will mean for holiday plans uh, for the air industry overall and he's been uh, will be talking to the boss of Manchester Airport morning Sean yeah morning to you both uh, morning everybody um, we've already heard uh, on breakfast haven't we over the past few weeks about the concerns of the aviation industry social distancing being impossible in airports and on flights and now we're hearing those bosses of airlines and airports expressing concerns over what they've been told is a 14-day quarantine plan for those arriving into the UK. Heathrow Airport this morning saying that we'd be, British business will be stuck in third gear until we can fry, fly more freely again. And I've got the boss of Manchester Stansted East Midlands Airport with me this morning, Chief Executive at Manchester Airports Group, Charlie Cornish. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sean. Morning. What do you feel about these quarantine measures being put in by the UK government? Well, at this stage, we still need to see the detail on what the quarantine measures actually mean and where the exemptions actually sit. But, but ultimately, quarantine will just stop people flying. It's unlikely airlines will fly planes. It's unlikely passengers will choose to fly. So at this moment in time, we're expecting the quarantine to be time limited. And if it is time limited, we can then focus on how we can actually get travel back to, to normal levels. I mean, aviation is such an important part of the UK economy. There's over one million jobs at stake. And certainly I would urge the government to work with the industry and their European counterparts to put the right operational procedures in place to allow resumption of flying. By time limited, do you have an idea of how long these quarantine measures may be put in place for? No, there is no detail yet. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more detail this week. But ultimately we're hoping that the operational procedures potentially involving uh, gloves, masks, equally new technology will allow the restrictions to be lifted. You say that you don't expect people to be flying and airlines to actually fly those planes. For, for those people that have holiday plans this summer where they intended in a few months' time to fly abroad somewhere and fly back, would you now expect that to just be off the table for everybody? No, I think it's too early to take that call. Uh, as I said, the government haven't confirmed the duration of the quarantine. And equally, working with the Department for Transport, the industry is looking at a restart and recovery programme, which will involve new, new procedures, new protocols that should hopefully allow some of the travel restrictions to be lifted. But even if those travel restrictions are lifted, do, do these measures damage the confidence of consumers further in the months to come, do you think? Well, I think, I think it's inevitable that consumers will be confused by the message. They will not be certain as to when they should book their holidays. That is inevitable. And one thing we will urge the government to do is to work with the industry to get that quarantine arrangement confirmed in detail, but equally to try and get it lifted as soon as practical. 
You mentioned wanting some more details about exemptions. We know that those travelling from France, from Ireland into the UK will not be part of these quarantine measures. How, how does that play out in reality? Will you be checking where people start their journeys if they're flying from further afield and then changing in Paris to fly into Manchester Airport? Yeah, that's, that's certainly a consideration. And when the government come out with more detail in terms of identifying the processes that airports have to follow to make those kind of checks, uh, we'll, we will then have to implement them. But at this moment in time, there is limited detail. What about the impact on, on your business? How long can you go on for without having to start looking at laying off staff and making bigger cost cuts than you might have originally planned? Well, I think, I think the whole sector uh, will, will lag a return to, to normal working. And it's important that the government do reconsider the need for a specific aviation package. Now, at this moment in time, there is a job retention scheme. But for my company, that's, that's worth less than 5% of our total operating cost. It's welcome, but it's relatively de minimis. So we do need a wider aviation support package if this is going to go on for a prolonged period of time. So until such time uh, as we understand new protocols, when travel restrictions will be lifted, it's too early to say whether, whether we actually need to make people redundant. But at this moment in time, we are looking much more to the future, much more to work with the government to see how we can get travel back, back to normal levels. Charlie Cornish, thank you. Uh, Chief Executive there of Manchester Airports Group, which has Stansted and East Midlands uh, under his watch as well. So y you can just see there that the desire for detail, again, we're talking about you know, retailers and people going back to work a little bit earlier. That's the aviation industry, even though they know quarantine measures are on the way, still can't really plan properly for the months ahead because they don't know how long they're going to be in place for. Yeah, as you say, Sean, it's one of those days, isn't it, when there sort of seem to be a lot more questions than answers at this point. Mm. Uh, Thank you very much, though. Uh, it's nine minutes to eight o'clock. Don't forget, um, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, is going to be here at 8.30 this morning. Uh, when our next guest found out she had...